9.9 .9 practice problems. The table above provides the half cell reactions for the standard reduction potentials needed to determine if an aluminum air fueled cell can be constructed. Which of the following equations best supports the possibility of obtaining electrical energy from such a cell? So first we need to see uh, which direction these equations need to go into. And um, we can see that originally hydroxide is going to be on uh, both uh, both of the product sides for these initial reactions. However, the hydroxide is needed to go ahead and react with the aluminum to produce the aluminum hydroxide, which means that we do need to reverse this reaction, which means that um, overall our sign will flip. So when we find our uh, enot, our energy for the cell, uh, we are going to be keeping the uh, plus 0.4 uh, volts for uh, the production of the hydroxide ion the same but we will be flipping the sign for the um, aluminum hydroxide so that would eliminate option choices a and or sorry c and d leaving us exclusively with a and b now the only differential between option a and option b is going to be this point here which is representing our n or number of electrons. So you'll notice that as of right now, the number of electrons do not match. We do need the same number of electrons to be donated as to be um, accepted on both sides of an oxidation redox reaction. And that means we need the lowest common multiple between those two as this is not currently balanced. Lowest common multiple between three and four is going to be 12. So that means that option choice A where we have 12 as the number of electrons and we have the uh, correct uh, version of the half reaction being having its sign flipped is going to be my best answer choice. Based on the reduction potentials given in the table opposite, which of the following gives the balanced chemical equation for the correct standard cell uh, potential for a galvanic cell involving uh, scandium-3 and uh, manganese-2? So um, as I look here, I can see that uh, manganese going from um, our uh, cation form to solid, we have a uh, E value of negative 1.18 and scandium uh, turning into our solid is going to have an E value of negative uh, 2.08. Since manganese's uh, reduction potential is going to be um, uh, greater than scandium's, uh, we are going to leave manganese in uh, this format here where we would be producing uh, solid manganese. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate answer choices A and B which have us producing uh, solid scandium. Uh, next up we need to go ahead and flip the sign for the scandium since we are reversing its overall um, reaction there and then um, the, the difference here is uh, non-existent for the overall uh, balancing of the chemical equation. However, we do see the overall um, coefficients present that we would need for everything. And so um, we're just going to go ahead and <clears throat> uh, add these up basically. So we're going to have negative uh, 1.18 and then minus a minus which is basically a plus 2.08 and uh, that will give us a value of point 0.9, which is option choice D. So that would be my answer choice. The diagram above represents an electrolytic cell in which the reaction of sodium uh, chloride going to sodium and chlorine takes place. The table gives the relevant reduction half reactions for the standard uh, reduction potentials. Based off of the information given, which of the following is true? So I can see that um, my uh, standard reduction here uh, for sodium, we have negative uh, 2.71. For chlorine, we have uh, this is going to be uh, the opposite here since we are producing the ions. 
um, rather than our uh, desired gaseous chlorine here. So this would need to be flipped there. And then we would see that uh, still chlorine is going to be uh, the, the higher standard reduction potential. The table, uh, do, 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 which of the following is true? Um, option choice A says the operation of the cell generates a potential of 1.35 volts because the reaction is thermodynamically favorable. So uh, we can go ahead and figure out um, what this is going to be here. Since this is not going to be a spontaneous reaction, we are going to be using a different equation than we have previously. And that is that E naught of our cell is going to be equal to the um, E naught of our oxidation plus E naught of our uh, reduction of our cathode. So this is uh, crucially different because we have an addition here instead of a subtraction of our um, uh, energy potential for our oxidation. So since they are just going to be added together, we are going to go ahead and um, add up, sorry, uh, going to go ahead and add up the negative uh, 2.7 and the negative uh, 1.36, which gives us negative uh, 0.04. And again, this is non-spontaneous, which means that we have to put energy into it in order for the reaction to occur. And so we are going to say that um, we are requiring at least the amount of voltage that we uh, calculated in order for the reaction to proceed because it is not thermodynamically favorable. It is not um, going to spontaneously occur. According to the standard reduction potentials given above, which are the, what, uh, what is the standard cell potential for the reaction represented below? So here we have um, the reverse of this. So we are, we'll go ahead and change the sign of that. And then uh, go ahead and um, uh, add it all up. Uh, so this is going to be favorable, so we can go ahead and go back to cathode minus our anode. And so our cathode is going to be the reduction of um, our silver. And so uh, that is the uh, 0 0.8. And then minus our uh, negative, so effectively plus 1.66 um, will give us our value there. So 0.8 plus 1.66 gives us 2.4, and that is option choice D. According to the half reactions represented above, which of the following occurs in aqueous solutions under standard conditions? So um, I'm going to look at my uh, standard potential here, and I'm going to see that the copper is greater than that of the chromium. And so that means that I am going to uh, be reducing my copper. And so it's going to go in that direction there. So anything where we uh, don't end up with our copper uh, going uh, and being reduced is going to be eliminated. Then I just need to go ahead and uh, balance it out. Um, now we are going to be flipping this reaction here, so we should be dealing with uh, the chromium 2 um, ion on the left hand side, and so that does uh, go ahead and eliminate option choices A and E, which only leaves me with option choice B, which again we were able to uh, eliminate down to because this is the only one where we had correctly uh, flipped this reaction here since our uh, standard energy potential uh, was lower there, so we needed to go ahead and flip it. And that's the only one where chromium had a charge of plus two on the reactant side. Using the information above, uh, what is the standard reduction potential for the half reaction represented? So here, um, we need to just go ahead and make sure that everything is in the correct place. We don't need to flip anything. And so we are going to be uh, producing um, hydrogen peroxide, which does mean that this needs to flip. And uh, then we can uh, go ahead 
and deal with that. Um, and so we're going to have, this is going to be non-spontaneous, and so we're going to go ahead and just add uh, these two values together. So um, 1.23 uh, plus or minus 0.55, oops. Uh, gives me 0.68, so option choice C. Using the information above, which of the following is true for the decomposition of peroxide? So uh, the decomposition of peroxide is itself spontaneous. However, the previous uh, reaction was uh, the reverse, where we were um, producing peroxide. And so uh, for the decomposition, um, we are going to be spontaneous, so our uh, delta G will be negative, and um, we are also going to be able to say that our K value is greater than 1. According to the information above, what is the standard reduction potential for the half reaction of uh, this random metal here? And so we uh, can see that uh, we are going to be uh, flipping this overall reaction since we need the uh, metal to be um, charged on the other side. And then we have uh, this going forward. Um, now, uh, since this is non-spontaneous, we're just going to go ahead and add these values together. So 0 0.8. Uh, plus a minus of 2.46 is going to give us uh, negative 1.66 volts. If the equation constant for the reaction above is 3.7 times 10 to the 15th, which of the following correctly describes the standard voltage um, E naught for the standard free uh, energy change delta G naught for this reaction. <clears throat> so we can see that the equilibrium constant is uh, very, very large here, uh, very much greater than one. So we can go ahead and um, uh, find out those values there. So we have K, this is K, K, and the uh, relationship between delta G and K is that delta G is equal to negative RT natural log of K. And uh, so our R value is, so negative R value of uh, 8.314. Um, now we don't have a temperature provided. However, um, we can see that this K value is super duper, duper large and the temperature is not actually going to matter. Since we're just dealing with whether this is positive or negative, um, this is going to mean that we are definitely going to be uh, negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate anything that says that my delta G is uh, positive or not negative. So that would be answer choices B, C, and E. And then um, I can go ahead and uh, deal with what it says about my uh, e value. And so we know that delta G is equal to the negative N uh, times the Faraday constant and then our, our E naught value here. Since we know that delta G is going to be negative um, that, and uh, we can't have negative number of um, electrons there, Faraday's constant is positive, that does mean that this has to be positive in order for this to occur. So that means that uh, our E naught is going to be positive and our delta G is going to be negative. When a magnesium wire is dipped into a solution of lead 2 nitrate, a black deposit forms on the wire. Which of the following can be concluded from this observation? Um, so we can see that we are uh, going ahead and getting a new, a new product there. And so uh, that does mean um, that we are going to be uh, favorable since we weren't running any electricity through this. And so uh, that's what we're going to say. So the, let's go through the answer choices options here.
and it'll say that the standard reduction potential uh, for uh, lead two is greater than that for mag uh, magnesium two. So that means that we would uh, go ahead and um, precipitate this out. That does sound good, but let's see if there's anything better. Magnesium is less easily oxidized than lead. Um, we can see that we are precipitating something out, so no. An external source of potential must have been supplied. No, uh, just as it was dipped and something precipitated out. So no uh, external potential was required. The magnesium wired will be the cathode for the magnesium and uh, lead cell. So uh, nobody do da. The magnesium is what is going to be uh, uh, oxidized there. And then uh, lead can uh, preferentially uh, replace magnesium from the solution. Um, this is the opposite here. So option choice A is going to be my best answer choice.